hey guys what is going on i'm back with another video and today i want to talk about the atlanta falcons and their draft this past weekend uh we had a lot going on a lot of pretty decent picks i want to go through every pick and i want to talk about an undrafted free agent so if you guys don't mind hanging around for a while that'd be great if you want to comment on anything that i said that'd be awesome if you would like share and subscribe that'd be really awesome so let's go ahead and get into this all right First pick of the of the Falcons was number four overall. They ended up picking up Kyle Pitts. Uh, Kyle Pitts was, uh, I ain't going to say it was a no-brainer, but if you wanted to keep Matt Ryan around for at least a couple more years, I think Kyle Pitts was a very safe pick. Freakish, athletic, ability, a lot of things that he can do uh, inside and out as far as on the line or if you want to put him out in the slot or even all the way out as a receiver. Very good, talented, got some hands, can run, can do a little bit of everything. I have no issue with the pick overall. I know a lot of people said that we should have got a quarterback or whatever the case may be. And uh, I'm not disagreeing with that, but I still trust in Matt Ryan, and I kind of understand where the organization is going as far as trusting Matt Ryan. And I see no issue here. Matt Ryan clearly, in my opinion, has not been a problem for the team seemed like everything else around him was mostly defensively but we'll get into that um uh, real shortly i like the pick overall have no problem with it and um i'm gonna be honest just so you guys know there's gonna be a running theme throughout this entire video that i necessarily don't have a problem with most of these picks so this is a good way that if you do disagree put it in the comments and let me know richie grant he was picked second Fifth, uh, I'm sorry, second round, 40th overall. They traded back a few spots and still got this uh, this guy. I think it's a pretty good pickup as well because even though we did end up signing Eric Harris and uh, we got Deron Harmon, I think that this guy's going to start right away. I think he's going to be the type of player that we need. Ball hawk, good playmaking abilities, good instincts. I watched a little bit of his clips at UCF. Look like it's exactly what you would like on defense. I don't know too much about the Falcons defensive coordinator, but based on this pick and what we need, looks like it's in the right direction as far as what the team needs. Unlike the Kyle Pitts pick, it seems like this pick is is kind of showing the identity of what the of what the team is going to look like as far as good grounded players unlike Kyle Pitts which I'm not taking nothing away from him he's just that type of talent that you couldn't pass up on with the offense that we already have I mean all the other defensive players that you'll see or even the quarterback position was just not viable for the number four overall pick so Kyle Pitts was good but Richie Grant it started to show you the identity or the type of players that the organization with the new regime the coach and the uh, general manager what they want to put in place for this team so it kind of gave me that type of vibe I don't have a problem with the pick and this is where it gives you a sense of where they're going Jalen Mayfield was a third round pick number 68 uh, overall offensive lineman out of Michigan now this guy I've watched a few things on him as well he seems like he's ready for the tackle position. Some people say they might try to move him inside. I'm not really sure. He's uh like I think he's like 6'5, 330, really big, solid offensive lineman. They got him listed as an offensive tackle and guard, but most of the time I've seen him, he played the tackle position. And uh when I was watching some clips of him in Michigan, I think it's an excellent pick because you see what uh like Lindstrom and McGarry even when you see Jake Matthews, you see what they got right there on the line. Um, it, it's just it's just more bodies, and the more bodies, the better. And I think it's just going to help out because this guy, he seems like he's ready to play. It may take a while, but for the most part, I don't have a problem with him being there because we need the depth. We need the the girth. We need the size in, on the line. It looks like he's that type of guy that will do it. I don't see a problem with the pick once again. And uh, it's just that you want, you, once again, you see the identity of what this organization wants to put in. A lot of guys who have the ability, a lot of guys who have a, uh, have the instincts and the guys who can be developed into something 
really, really special. So we'll see how that plays out. Darren Hall, San Diego State was on the it was a fourth round pick, pick overall 108. Seems like uh another physical corner, like to do uh, re- really good at man coverage, or that's his style necessarily. And um look like he's gonna be able to uh what you want to call it, develop into the type of corner that you would like to see as far as man coverage. Uh, I think that he's going to be uh, okay. I'm not really sure because once you get down to the fourth, fifth, sixth round, sometimes these are the areas where you can make your money at. Sometimes these are the ones that you don't really hear from until a few years later. So you don't really know. But uh, it looks like he's going to have time to develop because we do have a handful of cornerbacks uh, that's going to be vying out for the position. And we'll see how it plays out. Maybe he'll be one that rises to the top. Because I think you still have A.J. Terrell. You still have um, the kid uh, out of uh, Ohio State. Oh, I can't remember his name. And the guy out of Colorado. Please forgive me. I done lost their, I forgot their names just that quick. Um, but we'll see how those all play out. You know, the only one that really stands out to me is A.J. Terrell. Because he did play pretty good at the end of the season. So, uh like I said, you got a handful of uh, uh, guys there, but we needed the depth, and we'll see how that plays out with Darren Hall. Um, really glad to see him there because I've seen some clips on him as well, and it, it seems like he, he he seems like he's going to be a, a pretty good corner if they develop him correctly. Back to the offensive line, we got Drew Dahlman, offensive uh, center from well, offensive center, we got a center from Stanford, fourth round, 114th pick overall. I think this is a really good uh, pick right here. I think this is uh, not necessarily um, a a gem, but it's definitely a steal. I think this guy could be um, possibly starting for the – he possibly could be starting for on the offensive line. You know, you got Matt Hennessy. He's already there. He did pretty good. But I think Drew Dahlman is probably going going to win that out. I like this pick right here. This pick is really good, really solid. And uh, one, this is just a, a smart pick right here. Um, it wasn't really big on a run on offensive centers and that I've seen. And if, even if they were, most of them that was there was, was pretty much a smart pick overall. None of them actually looked like they were uh, – none of them really looked like it was a bad pick. I did see some some a little bit of problems with Dahlman. I saw him get pushed around a little bit. But I think he's gonna be okay. I think you know after a while he gets some you know some more development. I think he'll be fine. Uh, all, all, all in all, I think with the run game for say, I think he'll be perfect for that. Along with the, um, uh, I mean he'll be perfect along with uh, Jalen Mayfield. I think that you know along with him and the other guys up front, I think we're gonna try to beef up the run game more because we need that, especially with the running backs we have. So I think Dahlman will be okay. I think and I think this is a good pick. Maybe a little uh, a sliding back on the pass protection, but this is a smart pick for long term because between him and Matt Hennessy, I'm not really sure um, if it's solidified, but I think uh, Dahlman will win that battle overall. He'll be playing, uh, probably starting this season. Taquan Graham, defensive tackle out of Texas. Fifth round pick, 148 overall. We needed somebody to help out with uh, JD uh, uh, Grady Jarrett. And uh, I'm not sure if this is going to be the guy because they're doing a 3-4 scheme, and it's going to be really weird. Because I, at first I thought it was going to be 4-3, but they're flipping back to 3-4. So I don't know where he will fit, but is they saying that he could possibly play defensive end as well. We'll see how that plays out. Um, it looks like he's going to be all right. Depends on where they put him. I'm not really sure if they're going to have him as a nose tackle, or whatever the case may be. Cause when you play three, four, that's what, that's basically going to be the case. Um, and like I said, this is going to be something that we're going to have to see throughout the preseason or even throughout the season on how this plays out. Because, uh, I'm not sure because it's, um, you know, like I said, it's a three, four defense with the defensive coordinator and uh, it's going to be interesting, you know, it, it, how he's going to go. I don't have anything bad to say about him because he did look pretty good when I did watch him. I didn't see any issues as far as technique or whatever the case may be. It seemed like he's um, going to be a pretty good um, project player or he has a lot of upside to him. Either way you put it out there, it seems like another safe pick for the Atlanta Falcons. All right, I'm going to have problems. Uh, <laughs> 
pronouncing this name, but I think he's going to be really good for the 3 4 defense. We just got finished talking about that. Um, let's say Adeto, Adeto, uh, I can't even say it. Adeto, uh, I can't even say it, but I, I, I think I say his last name. I'm trying to say it. Um, Ojun DJ, I think I said that right. Whatever, I'm not even gonna go there anymore. You know, I was trying to practice it prior to this, but I prior to recording, but I couldn't get it right. Edge rusher out of Notre Dame. Uh, I think that this guy is gonna be a pretty good, really good uh, pickup right here, late in the fifth round, 182 pick overall. Um, really good, physical, athletic. Very good. I think he's going to be fit. He's going to fit into this really well because not only that he's he, he's an edge rusher. He's not one of those four three. He doesn't have to be on the line. He can come from anywhere on the side on either side of the defensive uh side of the um side of the front seven, and he'll be able to um be an impact right away. You know, with him and uh, possibly Dante Fowler, Deion Jones, uh, and uh and you know and the other guys. I think he'll be he'll fit in perfectly for what they're trying to do so um it's going to be interesting to see but i think he's going to be uh, on the field and you're going to see a lot of him really really early avery williams cornerback out of boise state a lot of people saying that he's a special teamer but he, can, he can do a lot of things on the special teams and uh, i'm not really sure where he will fit defensively because he's a cornerback fifth round pick 183 pick right back to back along with um a gun, um, a, a gun to DJ. I can't say it right, but I, I almost got it right. But um, I don't know where he will fit because he was picked right behind him. But I, we'll see how it goes. Cause you already got Cordell Patterson on special teams and saying that he could do pretty well on special teams as well. We'll see how it, that plays out. Now I want you to know that a lot of players do they do make a staple for themselves on special teams, and we'll see how that plays out because. Some guys who are good on special teams usually keep a job in the NFL and they can be very valuable uh, when they are uh, on special teams just to see what type of playmaking ability that they can do on that side of the ball. Last pick, this kid right here. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know how this guy slipped this far once I was looking at some of this, um, when I was looking at some of his uh, highlights, some of the way that he plays. Some of the highlights, the way that he plays, I don't know where this guy, how he ended up falling in the sixth round because I, I didn't see anything that says don't pick this guy. Frank Darby, Arizona State, six-round pick, 187 overall, wide receiver out of Arizona State. Frank Darby looks physical. He looks like he can get behind a defense. He looks like he is not afraid of contact, and he has the ability to catch the ball. I don't know what's going to happen to this kid. Personally, I think he's going to be on the roster day one. You have Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, Russell Gage, who had a breakout season as well. There's no guarantee that any um, of these receivers, well, I'll say probably Calvin Ridley, you don't see if Gage or Julio is going to still be on the roster at the end uh, uh, by June 1st. So Frank Darby, is look like he's going to be a steal. I think this kid is going to be really good, and he's going to fit in. Even if everybody stays on the roster, which that is unlikely, I still think this is a really good pickup because now you have Darby, you have Julio, you have Ridley, you have Gage, you have um, uh, Hayden Hurst, and you have Kyle Pitts. You have weapons, serious weapons, and I think the way Frank Darby approaches the, the game he look like he's going to be competing for a job, and I don't think the Falcons are going to let him go. I think this kid is going to be a Falcon. I, I really think that this kid is going to be on the squad, and he's going to be playing. If you want to see any of his highlights, definitely go down. In, um, uh, I think I'll put his highlights in the comment section because he's the only one that really kind of has me excited on based on what everybody else has done in the draft. I mean, Kyle Pitts is a no-brainer. But for to get this guy in the sixth round, and you may not know much about him, I'll put some of his highlights down in the description so you can go check out what this kid is capable of doing. I think he's going to be very, very valuable. I think he's a steal for the Atlanta Falcons, especially with we don't know what's going to happen with Julio and or Russell Gage and anybody else that's on offense that can catch the ball. You just don't know what's going to happen to him. I think he is an excellent pickup for the Atlanta Falcons. Um, 
I don't really do many grades or whatever. I'm not really into the grading or whatever. I just look at what they can do and hopefully they'll be able to bring what they can uh, do to the table. I mean, everybody can say A, B, C, or D. And, you know, that's so easy to say. Me personally, I think it's lazy because you just don't know what they're going to do once the season starts. All you know is what their abilities and hopefully they bring it to the table, like I said. Um, Also, before I get out of here, there has been uh, a signing for the Atlanta Falcons because everybody wanted to say, hey, we needed a, a runner. I mean, we needed a running back. We needed a quarterback. Well, we did not go and get a quarterback, I mean, running back, but we did get a quarterback. Felipe Franks was signed to the Falcons as an uh, undrafted free agent. I think this is another excellent place for Felipe Franks to be. A lot of people say he has a lot of upside. He's very raw. He's not uh, developed correctly. And I think this is a place where he can be developed. You also have to understand that uh, Arthur Smith the court, um, the was the offensive coordinator. He's our coach now, but he was the offensive coordinator for the Titans. And what he did was basically turn around Ryan Tannehill's career. So with Matt Ryan still playing maybe two more years, maybe three, Felipe Francis could be there learning how to play the position correctly under the same person who basically turned around uh, – Ryan Tannehill's career and end up getting Ryan Tannehill a big contract. So this is a perfect place for Felipe Franks. Hopefully he sticks around for a year or two and see how that goes. And maybe he'll end up being a starter. We also end up getting AJ McCarron. I talked about that in the last video and um, I'm not big on AJ McCarron. Perfect backup. That's where he needs to be. Come in and play a game or two when needed. But I think Felipe Franks easily could be the future. If we actually, uh, develop him develop him the right way and actually get him out there to where he can actually be successful learning behind Matt Ryan learning under Arthur Smith I think it's a perfect place for him I see no downside to any of this now at the end of the day I'm going to go ahead and start closing out at the end of the day, I think the Falcons are on the right track of doing what they need to do as far as building this team. This is not the Falcons of old. This is not the Falcons of where it was, um, you know, we just trying to get a bunch of players and hopefully they stick. This right here looks like a lot of development in, in, in a lot of work in progress. I have no problem with that, especially when you have a brand new regime coming in, a new GM, you have a new coach, a whole new coaching staff. And it was like everything they did was smart picks. I didn't see anything that was a head scratch or nothing that was crazy out of the way. And um, it's going. To, all it does is just make things interesting throughout the season. And this is what you want to see from a team that's pretty much uh, salary cap strapped and you have a lot of players that are getting older. Uh, well, I'll say important players getting older and possibly going to be moved out of the door. So it's going to be really interesting. You see Matt Ryan. You already seen what happened with the running backs. Um, you see Julio Jones, excellent talent, but he's getting older and his contract is strapping the team. So uh, uh, and you already seen a lot of other guys on defense that was pushed out the door because of injuries and or money. So we're going to see how things continue to um, push through throughout the rest of the season. And I'll be here giving you guys all the commentary and my thoughts and opinions. So hopefully you guys really enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit winded. I probably was going to go live with this, but I decided to just record it. But I will be doing more live streams of this. So you guys can check me out right here on the First and Frame Rage channel. I'll be talking about Atlanta Falcons stuff. Also, we'll be talking about Georgia Southern football stuff, which I will be doing a video on that very, very soon which in, within the next couple of hours or whatever the case may be so look out on that video it'll be uploaded soon all right you guys take it easy you guys be, uh be safe and hopefully i'll see you guys around for more atlanta falcons georgia southern and i do the podcast as well we, we have all that stuff going on so you guys take it easy you guys take care peace